2017. It was a remarkable year for India in space. ISRO launched a record-shattering 104 satellites into orbit and followed that up with the success of the GSLV Mark III, which will reduce our dependency on launches with foreign rockets. It's a promising time for the Indian space program as we look to make our mark on the global stage. Let's look at the journey of ISRO's humble beginnings and how it overcame multiple challenges to create one of the most advanced space programs in the world. When Sarabhai visualized the space program, he had in his mind the country's ability to build satellites on its own, launch also the same, thereby realizing an autonomous access to space, and then use the satellites for a variety of applications, whether it is communication, broadcasting, remote sensing, education, health, and so on and so forth. Then after his untimely death, Sir Dr. Sadish Dhawan took over, and when he took over, he had to not only do this proof of concept kind of a thing to be carried forward like the satellite instruction and television experiment. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai was a visionary. Given the meager resources at his disposal, the focus was on developing a civilian program that applied space technology for socio-economic development of the country. His successor, Satish Dhawan, carried through on that vision. First satellite, Aryabhata satellite project in for which Professor Rivard was the project director. It was complex in a way, in the sense, no? except him, we were 3,300 people, nobody knew what a satellite was. No? So as, as one person, he steered the efforts of the entire uh, team. No? I joined ISRO in 1973 in the Structures Group, and we started work straight away on the structural design of Ajapata satellite. We take technology for granted today. The computers of the 1960s and 70s used for these missions had lesser computing power than today's pocket calculators. We used to plot the data on a graph sheet and then compare the altitude, how much it has reached and what has happened. There were no computers to calculate many of the parameters. Aryabhata's success led to more ambitious projects like Rohini, Apple and others. Talking about uh, Apple satellite, it is, a, it is the first time that uh, we have gone through the process of building a communication satellite. Apple was our first satellite, uh, which uh, went all the way up to 36,000 km and uh, beyond uh, low Earth orbits. We had a solid motor. As the spacecraft was growing, it was little inadequate. So Apple really did not reach the geostationary position. So we had to have a moving antenna to support. Nevertheless, it uh, validated most of our ground infrastructure and gained confidence. Uh, we got a confidence to conduct such a mission, which uh, paved the way for the later successful satellites. Squadron leader Rakesh Sharma, Sari Rasht ka dhyan aap ke taraf hai aur hum sab aap ko badhai dete hain. Ye ek itihasik kadam hai, meri aasha hai ki isse humara desh antariksh ke prati jagrook hooga aur saath hi humare yuvko ko sahasik kaar karne ki prerna milegi. Oopar se Bharat kaisa dikhta hai aap ko? Aap ji ma... When Rakesh Sharma went, entire nation was knowing. In fact, that the awareness has increased from that 1960s. Having worked on experimental satellites for close to a decade, it was time to switch gears. The INSAT series of satellites was conceived to provide TV, radio and telecommunication services to a growing economy. But it wasn't enough that we were building our own satellites. As a country with bigger ambitions, it was imperative that we operationalized an indigenous launch vehicle, thus eliminating reliance on foreign launchers. Yeah, I spent about 16 years in uh, 
PSLU project, right from uh, design to the first three launches. Um, the first launch was a failure. This is because of a software error where um, uh, there was a software overflow which reversed the control and then uh, it, because of that the vehicle lost control and then it fell into, uh, it didn't go to orbit. It, that happened in the third stage, but in spite of that, the fourth stage ignited and then fourth stage corrected all the errors, but then it didn't have the velocity to go to orbit. So it ended up in the Bay of Bengal. So, but then we learned, we have all the four stages have worked. Everything worked except for the software overflow. In spite of the software overflow, the four stage could recover and then proceed. So as far as we go, except for that one single error of a software overflow, the flight was a grand success as we go. Of course, this is a very small error that could, I mean, of course, I mean, grievous error, all right, but then it's a small error. So it was corrected and the second flight downwards, we've been continuously having success till now. Today we are in uh, C-39, so including uh, plus two, about 41 launches have gone off successfully. We have a workshop, uh, workhorse in PSLV, which is an intermediate class of vehicle, but there is no comparative capability elsewhere in the world. So if you want to go for a medium class satellite to be launched, I think they would prefer ISRO in terms of the PA launch vehicle and also it has become a workshop for all our vehicle missions on remote sensing, meteorology and so on. With a robust system in which we could not just build but also launch satellites that had a direct impact on our economy, India's space program was set for a major leap. Chandrayaan-1 was a major success. It confirmed the presence of water on the moon, reigniting interest in our friendly neighbour. For Chandrayaan, the distance was not much. The trip delay was only 1.33 seconds. We required a, a ground network uh, which has to be built from scratch. That was quite challenging. As far as the spacecraft is concerned, the hardware-wise, there is not. It was similar to the satellites which, which we are already developing. Conduct, conduct of the mission was the most challenging portion. So we came up with some novel idea called a string of stations called burn arc stations. So the satellite, the, the, all these maneuvers for uh, interplanetary mission are conducted when the satellite is close to Earth, called perigee. So in, the, in perigee, when the perigee is as low as 280 kilometers, your visibility per ground station is only some eight minutes. So our burn will be, or our uh, maneuver will take much more time. So it is not enough we have one station. Then we realized we require a string of stations. Then we came up with the burn arc stations, starting from Trivandrum, next Bangalore, next Sierra Kota, next Port Bear, next Singapore Brunei Bayak. This provided the continuous coverage, seamless coverage, Switching one after the other, really it was good. India had joined an elite space club and the world took notice. This was followed by an even more bolder mission to the Red Planet. The Mars Orbiter mission, fondly referred to as Mangalyaan, was unique for many reasons. It was the first time a space agency placed an orbiter around Mars in its very first attempt. Moreover, this was accomplished at a cost of just $74 million. It is still operational today, having exceeded over 1,000 days of operation, well over what it was designed for. India has made four forays into the planetary mission. Hopefully this will be a very important launching point for being a part of global systems, which will come up in the 21st century for exploration of the solar system and probably exploitation of the solar system. I still remember uh, Kasturi Lincoln once telling if to keep ISRO people uh, uh, working, only one massage dosa is required. <laughs> we have spoken about the journey so far, but there's a lot left to do. The future is exciting. There's an opportunity for India to step up and become one of the countries that shape the future of humanity.
with space playing a huge role in our daily lives.